Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. So this is the explanation video um, on the swap that is going on right now on my Facebook page, which is Coffee, Cake, and Crafting. Um, if you do not have Facebook and you want to join the swap, um, please let me know by commenting before. Those of you who um, have swapped with me before like this, you already know my email, so you guys are good to go. Um, if you want to participate, just let me know. Okay, so housekeeping rules, okay? Um, tis the season for people to start getting super busy. I know it's back to school, it's homecoming, it's football practice, um, you know, football season, et cetera, et cetera. It's about to be the holidays. We start having a lot of flakers, okay? Um, this is not... Uh, to single anyone out. I'm just talking in general and this is not just from my page It is actually from all of the 20 craft uh, pages that I belong to that I swap on um, If you click on going on a swap or you comment I'm going You need to do everything in your power to complete that swap on time if you can't because life happens we all have life situations that come up out of nowhere. You must communicate with the admin or whoever's hosting the swap. Communication is key. I have no sympathy for people who do not contact me and I have to hunt you down. I don't care what the reason is. That may sound harsh. It is a little bit, but hosting a swap is a lot of work. It is a lot of time away from my family. It is a lot of time, effort. I have to do videos. I have to go to the post office. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I have to do. So mailing it out, you know, four or five days after the due date is just not okay. If you can't get it done, you need to communicate the second you realize, oh crap, I can't get this done. Is the host gonna be annoyed? Absolutely. But then we understand if you do not communicate, that's when we become angry. Okay. I'm sorry. This is harsh. I'm sorry. We have to start this out like this, but, um, I'm seeing it more and more on all of the pages that I'm part of. And quite honestly, it's rude. It is absolutely rude. And, um, I'm not tolerating it anymore in my swaps. Okay. That's, that's what it is. And I, you guys know me, I don't tolerate it already. Um, but it kind of, especially imagine if this was your first swap and somebody did not do their swap and you don't get anything, you don't know why, uh, there's zero communication. It's going to make you not want to swap anymore. And there are way more swappers than there are flakers. Um, so it kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth and crafting is supposed to be fun and not stressful. So if you flake, it's stressful. Um, so we're just asking to communicate 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 if you you know most groups give you about a month to do it if you find out in week three that you just can't get it done if you contact your host then he or she can actually get someone to fill in for you and it's no big deal um it becomes a big deal when it's like a week after the due date and you know we've messaged you three six seven times and you have not responded um that's when it gets a little tricky and we do talk across the craft world, so if you flake on one of my swaps, um, you know, 20 hosts are going to know it. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm sorry we had to start it off like that, but tis the season. Um, so just please, if you if you are joining a swap, this swap, another swap, a swap on, you know, a different group, just keep that in the back of your mind. If you can't do it, just communicate. We all know life happens. We appreciate that life happens. We understand our own life happens, um, but it's kind of, you know, and I know some of you have been in groups where the host has had life happens and you're so annoyed that you haven't gotten anything back. Um, so it's, it's the same way. We all just got to keep each other accounted for it. Um, you know, and just remember that when you're in group swaps, you have three other people waiting for your stuff. Not only those three people, but the host. And then those three people are angry at the host because they haven't gotten anything back and then it's not the host's fault and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so communicate. Okay, cool. Four minutes of that, we're done. 
All right, so this swap is called the Halloween Pocket Letter Row Swap, hence the beautiful trick-or-treat pumpkin that we made on Monday night. Um, so for those of you who don't know, a pocket letter, um, let me get one out. This is a pocket letter. So in these little baseball card, Pokemon card, sleeve thingies, um, you have your little cards of whatever theme it is. For instance, these ones were Halloween. Um, this one was a States one. This one was a coffee one. So um, usually what I do is have everyone in a group of nine and you only have to make one pocket letter and send it to your um, your team members and then these are all this one's the one that I made and these other eight are from the other eight people in my group this time we're going to be in a group of four so your each individual row is going to be from different people so say you're in a group of Lindsay Trish and C this group one is all going to be from Trish this group two is all going to be from um, C and this section here is going to be all from Lindsay so that way um, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about eight people. Um, it's only you're going to have three different people's work. So each card is going to have a theme. Um, if you already read it, then you already know the themes. Um, and they are a little tricky. So what I suggest doing is you, because it's a little confusing, especially if you've never done group swaps before. If you have done group swaps, then you already know what I'm about to say. So you need to make three cards per person. So what I did was I just took the sleeve thing and I cut them apart right underneath the um, dotted lines or maybe yours is a solid line, I don't know. So I just cut them apart so I know that, okay, I need to make three of the same cards. So where's my example? I lost my example. That's okay, I'll just pull one out of the book. So, for instance, if I designed these three cards, I know I need to make three of this one, three of this one, and three of this one, right? Because I have three partners. So, I'm just going to line them up and say, okay, one, one of these ones for person A, for person B, and person C. One of these ones for person A, for person B, for person C. One of these ones for person A, person B, and person C. Um, I hope I'm explaining that to where you understand. Um, if not, then please ask questions. Um, my group over on Coffee, Cake, and Crafting, we are super supportive. Um, we don't mind answering questions. Um, please read the comments because your question may have already been answered, but, um, you know, ask your questions. Okay. So that's what I mean by a row of pocket letters. So each person is going to get the full row, okay? So you're gonna take your full row, you're gonna package it up, and we'll go over packaging in just a moment. And if you want to, you can say, this is for Trish, and you have it in your little box. And then you're gonna package up the next one, for C, you're gonna put it in your little box. And then package the next one, for Lindsay, put it in a box. So you're going to send me three complete sets of your pocket letter rows okay you don't have to put your partner's name on it that's fine it doesn't matter um, and you don't have to send a complete set to me if you don't want to um, it is not required it is definitely greatly appreciated um, but sometimes you only have enough supplies for three people instead of four so I understand but just make sure that yours is um, easy open um, so I can go ahead and show it on camera. Like for instance, say you only had three, I don't know, three of these skull charms, three of these skull cards, you know, make the three for your partners and then I can just show whichever one, um, you know, I can just open someone's and show it. It's not a big deal. Um, so again, not required, greatly appreciated, obviously. Um, this one, I don't have any set required goodies. Um, just your normal pocket letter goodies. Um, some examples are washi tape samples, um, some bling pieces. Let me see if I have any here. Some of these have people's address on the back, so I don't wanna, you know. Oh, here's a good one. Um, she did some fall embellishments that you can put in there. Um, 
some felt stickers, an altered paper clip, some die cuts she added a little rhinestone eyes to, cut aparts from the paper collection, um, a sample of rhinestone mesh, some tags and some um, sequins, and then some stamped images, a cute little coffee cup, and uh, some little Halloween flair. So those are just all samples of what you can add into your pocket letter. Um, just small little goodies to make it a pocket letter. Okay? Um, I've seen a ton of stuff in there. I've seen tea bags. I've seen glitter samples, um, mini paper clips, right, um, rhinestones, brads, whatever. Whatever fits in the pocket. Okay? Okay. So, each card is going to have a theme. So, um, let's get into the themes. Now, one of the themes is a little harder because you guys know I like my evil twists. Um, so yeah, one of them, the first card, um, it has to be shabby chic or cutesy. I know some people don't enjoy shabby chic, so you can do like a cutesy one. Um, but one of the elements has to be pink. Pink Halloween, what the cuss word am I talking about? Let me tell you. <laughs> Um, so for instance, this is the one that I made. It was for a shabby chic pocket letter swap. Pink. It is a Day of the Dead skull with a pink halo of flowers. And I added some pink little flowers there. It's pink seed beads. So it is easy to add pink to Halloween. Some of the mesh are pink. Um, this one she did a ballerina skeleton and these words are pink they look like they're gold but they're pink she put some black sequins in there so yeah pink halloween um this one was more i think more fall but she did do some uh, a pink spider and a pink pumpkin um this was a cutesy kind of one uh you know so we're asking for two layers um you know make it a little bit dimensional this one is uh, it says skin crawling but look it's so cute <laughs> um so yeah so it has to have an element of pink i don't care if you sneak the pink in like for instance if you made this bedazzled spider and you put a little tiny pink baby spider in there okay that's cool that counts as your element of pink um or instead of using a clear rhinestone you put a pink one that so for instance this one the eyelash trim and this lace is pink that counts be creative find your loopholes y'all know i love me some loopholes it counts it's cutesy and it has pink okay um the second one is orange and black okay so I said you can only use those colors within reason. If you need to have a little bit of white, like eyes or a ghost or something like that, that's fine. Just make the focal point the orange and black. So for instance, um, this one without the flower would be perfect. It has a little bit of white and a little bit of purple, but that's okay. Uh, let me see another example. I had a great one. Here we go. So the focal points are orange and black. It has a little bit of white. That's okay. Um, same thing with this. The RIP is in white. Fine. This is, you know, a gray. This orange and black. So um, those are good examples. This, that's fine because um, the main colors are orange and black. This has a little bit of green in it. Um, so just kind of, this is all orange and black. There's like orange um, polka dot thingies. So, you know, just kind of make it the focal point, orange and black, you know, as much as you can within reason. If you have a little bit of white, I'm not going to, you know, fire you. You're all right. Um, and number three, your choice. Do whatever Halloween you love. So this is Halloween. It's not fall. So like 
these two probably would not be a great Halloween um, pocket letter because they're more fall. It's like the pumpkin patch and stuff like that. Um, but if you do, you know, the little doll things, um, if that's your type of Halloween, cutesy Halloween, be cutesy. If your Halloween is beautiful, shabby chic, do another beautiful, shabby chic. If your Halloween is spooky, scary spiders, um, go ahead and do spooky, scary spiders. I don't like spiders, but do you? Um, if your if your um, style is you know like spooky and creepy, do spooky and creepy. So here are some examples. Have fun with it. Show off a little bit. This is one I made. It was kind of crazy. Looks kind of cool. Look kind of crazy, but hey, if you're cool and crazy, do cool and crazy. Cute. Okay, so those are all examples. If you need some more help, I am here. Let me know. Okay, next we have packaging. Okay, you must package your row in a decorated box of some sort. Okay, these rows are small. Oopsies. Um, when you have them broken down to just the three. Um, just the you know like the one row let's do it this way so they can be folded like so it'll be a lot less bulky because this is nine of them but um you can fold them so these jewelry boxes from walmart are perfect they fit in there perfectly so you can package your row up um inside of the box and decorate the box okay actually this one yeah they fit it's just i have too many right now so put them in the box. Just take it out. There you go. Put them in the box. Decorate the box. Put it in, you know, a ziplock bag or whatever. You're good to go. Okay. Um, you can use. Um, and I think these are six pieces for like two bucks at Walmart. It's the Daris brand in the jewelry making section. Okay. Um, you can use these cute little boxes from the Dollar Tree. This has my glitter in it right now. But the pocket letters fit perfectly inside. And they are deep, so you can fit, you know, your row of cards and a little extra goodie or whatever you want in there. They come three for a dollar. So, I'm lying to you. I think they come six for a dollar. Yeah, I think they're six for a dollar. It's either three for a dollar or six for a dollar. So either way, you only have to pay a dollar and you have three packaging. You can spray paint this. You can leave it as is and decorate it. Um, they come in different colors. You can show off and make a box. I did these boxes on my um, YouTube channel. I made this box from scratch. It's super cute. They fit in perfectly. Um, you can also buy boxes just like this at Dollar Tree, but they're a dollar each. So, you know, when you make them, they're essentially free. Or, if you want to be extra special and do an amazing box, you can do a shaped box. Um, I do have tutorials for my coffin box. So, it is the shape of a coffin. I printed the shape off on... Um, Google and I just made a box out of it. I do have a tutorial. I linked it on the Facebook page. It is here on YouTube. It's just a regular, it's just a box. Mine, this particular one has three by three cards in it because that's what I made it for. But you can put your pocket letter in there, your row in there, and it's beautiful. Decorate the top. Um, I did also a sugar skull. The sugar skull is probably too big. Um, but, you know, so there's examples of boxes. Um, poodles. Um, it's Sam Donaldson. She's a, a, a British uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She has 9 million boxes. She is the box queen. Um, if you keep yours pretty flat, you can use these old Stampin' Up! CD cases. Or, you know, the really any CD cases. Um, they're flat, so... Oh my gosh, I can't even open it. Um, you would probably have to put, you know two side by side and then one on top 
You don't have to put them in the little sleeve thingies if you don't want to, because um, I'm sure your partner's just going to take them out and put them, you know, in their nine-page pocket letter anyway. So it's up to you if you want to put them in there um, or not. So you just decorate the top of this. Bam. Halloween packaging, right? So any type of box will do. Um, you know, don't go too expensive. Um, but, you know, show off a little bit. So I think that was it. So we had the three theme cards and the packaging. Um, yeah. So that is the swap. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will be more than happy to answer them. Um, yeah. So um, I will see you over on my Facebook page, Coffee, Cake, and Crafting. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you join the swap. Have a great night.